everybody, it's Lisa and welcome to a new vlog. So I'm really excited about this vlog because I'm just so excited about this movie coming out. So the To All the Boys I Loved Before book trilogy by Jenny Han has been adapted into movies. So the first one came out a couple years ago. Did that come out in 2018? I'm not entirely sure. I forget what time is. Um, but the second one, P.S. I Still Love You, is coming out on the 12th of February, which is very soon. And I know on this channel, we talk about books. We talk about how great books are. But I actually think I prefer the To All the Boys I Love Before movie. Don't know if that's an unpopular opinion or a popular opinion. Not quite sure, but I think I do prefer the movie to the books. But I still really like the books. I still think they're a lot of fun. But I don't really remember what happens in the second and third book. Like, I read the uh, whole trilogy back to back within like three or four days. So it all kind of meshes together in my brain. I do remember what happens in the first one because just that's where the story starts. And I've seen the movie a few times, so I do know what happens in the first one. But the second and third one just kind of blend together. So I thought it would be fun to reread P.S. I still love you right before the movie came out. Okay, hi, quickly, Lisa from the future here. I just ended this vlog like a half hour ago and while I was doing my makeup, I realized that I never gave like a spoiler warning for this video. So if you haven't read the book P.S. I still love you or if you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want to be spoiled for what happens, um, maybe don't watch this vlog. So I just wanted to make everyone aware if you're watching this and you do not want to be spoiled for the book or the movie, I would click off now, I add it to your watch later, come back once you've seen the movie, read the book, whatever you want to do. Um, I'd love to have you back here and commenting and talking about it with me in the comments after you've, you know, read the book, watched the movie, but if you do not want to be spoiled, I would click off now. Okay, back into the video. <laughs> so it is February 7th and the movie comes out on the 12th. So I'm just starting this vlog now because I'm not actually sure when I'm going to pick this up, if I'm going to pick it up today or start it closer to when the movie's about to come out, like Sunday or Monday. I'm not entirely sure, but I just wanted to start the vlog in case I started reading it. But yeah, I'm going to reread this in preparation for the movie and then also film my reaction to the movie. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that yet. I don't know if I'm just going to film myself the whole time I watch the movie and then just like edit the parts that are interesting and when I'm actually like reacting or saying something. But either way, I'm going to be reading the book reacting to the movie and then probably talking about the comparisons, things that are different. I'm so excited. I have been waiting for this movie to come out what seems like forever. I absolutely love the first movie so I'm hoping the second one is just as good. Very excited to reread this and to figure out what actually happens in this book because again all blends together. I don't know what's going on <laughs> but to also watch the movie. So yeah I hope this vlog is interesting. Um, I have really no idea what I'm going to do yet for this, but um, I really just wanted to film my reaction to the movie because I'm so excited. But yeah, that's uh, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to start out this vlog because I wanted to start before I started reading this. So now I will start to read this and talk to you guys when I have some initial thoughts. So I just wanted to kind of give a quick update. It is the 10th, so Monday. So we still have a couple of days until the movie comes out and I'm very slowly making my way through P.S. I Still Love You. So I'm up to chapter six, page 42, and already I, okay, I should have reread the first one before going into the sequel, but that only would have made sense, so naturally I didn't do it. I thought I knew what happened in the first one, and I'd seen the movie a few times, so I just, I thought I knew what happened in that one, but I guess not. And then I remembered that I read the entire trilogy like back to back in the span of four days. So they all sort of mesh together in my brain. Um, but at this beginning of the book, Laura Jean and Peter aren't together. I don't think the hot tub stuff has like resolved. Did the video of it being leaked happen in the first book or does it happen in this one? I thought it would be in the first one because it happens in the movie, but I literally don't remember. So we'll see. But also there's already been like quotes that I think are in the trailer for the movie. Like this part where she says, this is my first date. And he says, how can this be your first date when we've gone out plenty of times? And she says, it's my first real date. Those other times are just pretend. This is the real thing. I think there's something either exactly like that or very similar in the trailer. I was just going to say, there's something else in here that I read last night that I was like, this I think is in the trailer. Or is it at the end of the movie that's already out? 
I don't remember, but he says, well, Laura Jean says, I don't want us to ever break each other's hearts. And Peter says, are you planning on breaking my heart, Cubby? Does that happen in the movie already? Or is that a trailer thing? I don't know which movie that's in, but that happens somewhere. But either way, it's cool that lines from the book are being in the movie. My memory is just bad. So whichever movie it is, whether it's the To All the Boys I Loved Before or the trailer, it's somewhere. <laughs> it's still pretty cool though. So yeah, that's my update. I should really get some reading done today because the movie comes out soon and I'm I'm not far. I need to get a good chunk of the way through this today. So I'm going to go and read and hopefully get a lot farther into this than I am right now. So I filmed the clip this morning and I just watched it back and it is completely blurry. So I'm not even going to put it in. Basically what you missed is me saying I needed to finish the book today. And I did. <laughs> so I finished reading P.S. I Still Love You uh, like a couple of hours ago. Yeah, I think it was around like four. So I'm very excited that I finished with plenty of time because I actually think I might rewatch the first movie to all the boys I love before tonight in preparation for the movie. So I think that is my plan, but I'm really excited that I finished this. Um, this was also my last book for the Swiftathon readathon, so I've completed that readathon as well with time to spare. I think the last day of that readathon was the 13th, so I'm very happy that I completed my TBR for that readathon and completed this book in time for the movie. But yeah, I finished P.S. I Still Love You, and now all there is left to do is watch and react to the movie, and I'm so excited. I have very high hopes for this movie because I love the first one so much. The first one was so well done. Definitely um, got the aesthetic, got the just the overall vibe from the books. I feel like they did it really really well. They really understood it and I just love the first movie so I must have loved the first book. No, the movie. So I have very high expectations for the movie. I'm very interested to see what from this book is uh, different from the movie. Um, I definitely am team John Ambrose. <laughs> I feel like that might be an unpopular opinion, but I am. So hopefully they don't uh, make John Ambrose look like a bad guy in the movie because I stand. But also Peter Kavinsky uh, driving Laura Jean's sister Kitty to school on her birthday probably was the cutest thing. I forgot that that happened. It made me question my whole, you know, thought process on a Team Peter or Team John Ambrose, but I'm still Team John Ambrose. <laughs> Alright, so that's my final check-in for the book. Um, so I will either check in with you guys later tonight when I start the movie, the rewatch of the first movie, or tomorrow when I'm about to watch the second movie. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just want to finish this chapter. Okay, uh, it's the 12th, the movie is out, so I'm going to watch uh, P.S. I Still Love You, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like check in once I have something to say. I was just going to have the camera like set up constantly recording me so I can comment while I watch it, but I feel like I would get easily distracted and then not watch the movie and enjoy it. So if I have something to say, I will pause the movie and kind of check in and tell you my thoughts so far. I'm super excited. I have very high expectations. Like I was saying yesterday, the first movie is so good. I rewatched the first movie last night and cried so much. I don't know what it is with that movie, but it makes me cry so much and I, I can't explain to you why. But I just adore that movie, so I have very high hopes for this one. I've already seen people talking about it on Twitter, so I just really am excited to watch it. So yeah, my only hope is that they do John Ambrose McLaren justice. <laughs> if they make him into a terrible character or make him do something that wasn't in the books just to make Peter Kavinsky look better, I will never forgive them. <laughs> okay, but yeah, let's, let's get started. Let's turn off Blue's Clues. Don't know why that's on my TV right now. Uh, let's go to Netflix and let's start the movie. I'm so excited. Is it normal to be this excited for a movie? I'm sure it is. Oh, there it is. Like you can see with this camera, but there it is. I'm seven minutes in. I already have something to say. First of all, I feel like their personalities, like Lana Condors and Noah Centineo's are kind of coming through a little bit, but it's so cute so far. I wasn't expecting that like lantern thing to be right at the beginning of the movie. When it's in the trailer, I was like, oh, that might be at the end, but it's at the very beginning. But also when they get home after their first date, and he, 
she closes the door and uh, Peter like does like a little dance thing. It's so cute. <laughs> Peter Kavinsky in the movie is very different, which is funny because it's Noah Centipede, as I like to call him, who's playing him, which like he's not, he's, you know, he's him. But I actually like Peter Kavinsky in the movie more than I do in the books. So let's see what happens in the rest of the movie. I'm only seven minutes in. I should probably keep going. <laughs> John Ambrose writes. <laughs> also, this is just a minor complaint. Those editions of Harry Potter did not exist when they were little, so they wouldn't be reading those editions. They couldn't have, like, fact-checked that just a little bit. <laughs> Why is that bothering me? It's the 15th anniversary editions. They were, like, small children. Unless this is set in the future. Okay, that... That was it. That was the <laughs> stupidest thing to complain about. Anyway. She cut down her hedges, Laura Jean. That is a metaphor! Are you sure? I can just keep Henry outside. Can I get him anything? <laughs> <laughs> I love Kitty. That was so funny. <laughs> also, I feel like I relate. That's like what I would say or what I would do. And her freaking out when she came inside. <laughs> uh, that has been my favorite part so far, I think. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> I already love him. <laughs> She's making the cherry turnovers that she did in the book. I just rebound it because Jenny Han shows up. <laughs> we stand. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> love to see it. What the heck is Maddie Ziegler doing in this movie? <laughs> What? <laughs> the Backstreet Boys song? A good choice. He just said Lincoln Park slaps. The use of the word slaps. I did the script for this movie. I did it. <laughs> it was me. So far, this scene with them in the treehouse with the time capsule has been really cool because it's like pretty much directly from the book. Like they're saying a lot of the same stuff that they said in the book. So. I think that that's really cool. I just can't believe he said Linkin Park slaps. <laughs> that was not in the book. That He had a different thing in there, but it's okay because he said it slapped, so it's excused. Ha, <laughs> 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 ha. treehouse seems so uncomfortable. I did not invite her. Like, officially. Why does it matter? You're the one who arranged the pizza. So we're going to have He's mad that pizza. someone else brought pizza. pizza. I don't know. Not like this, though. Boy. <laughs> Why am I crying over the part with the green beans? <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm so glad I was recording. <laughs> okay, well, I'm still crying, but now Blackpink is playing, so. <laughs> okay, well, that was chaotic. I was crying, and now Blackpink. I'm laughing at myself. If this makes it into the vlog... <laughs> I don't know why these movies cause this reaction. Nothing is happening right- well, she invited Jen to the treehouse and they're both talking about, um, the friendship bracelets. Why is that causing this reaction? Huh. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I just finished watching the movie like five minutes ago and I loved it. I cried so much. I didn't cry as much watching this one as I did with uh, the first movie. I definitely still cried a lot though and I cried at, again, stuff that was not um, that emotional. Things I shouldn't have been crying over. Um, but I think the stuff with her mom always gets to me in the first movie and now in the second one. So. I was crying anytime they mentioned her mom, but I really liked it. I definitely think, obviously, there were changes from the book. A lot of the scenes with the dance and the snow, I mean, they, those things are from the book, but they're, like, different nights completely. The dance is completely different. I definitely think that they changed a lot of, um, the way that it was set up a little bit, like, the structure of the, the drama, but I still really liked it, and I think Peter coming and picking Laura Jean up because she doesn't like to drive in the snow so cute <laughs> kitty 
still is one of my favorite characters. I absolutely love her. Her trying to set her dad up with their neighbor is iconic in the books. It's iconic in the movie. Her being like, she cut down her hedges. It's a metaphor. It was so funny. Sad we didn't see that much of Margot in this, but I know that we don't really, we didn't see her that much in the book either, so it kind of makes sense. But yeah, I think that they did a really good job. I think they did a good job of making the love triangle, like, not making one of them look terrible. In the books, Peter Kaminsky, he's just, he's just Peter Kavinsky. I don't know. He's, they didn't make John Ambrose look like the worst person ever, which was good. Um, I was really scared that they were going to make him look really bad just to make Peter look better, but I don't think they did that at all. I think that they really stuck to the characters, and Laura Jean would die for her, would take a bullet for her. <laughs> also, their dad. Their dad is one of my favorite characters in the books and in the movies. I, I love him. Okay, hi. Lisa from the future again. I just wanted to give a quick, uh, more thought out review a little bit of the movie because I feel like I said that I didn't like the second one as much as the first one. Still really enjoyed it, but didn't like it as much, but didn't really explain why. I didn't really give an explanation as to why I liked the first one more because I didn't really give myself like an opportunity to think about the movie. I just started talking about it like right after I finished it. So I just wanted to quickly talk about my thoughts. So I still stand by everything that I said right after I finished the movie. Um, so what you're kind of, what you've already started to hear and what you're about to hear, but I just wanted to quickly talk about a couple of things I didn't love about it. So the first thing is John Ambrose as a character. I still am really happy that they didn't make him do something um, that was out of character or just something bad just to make Peter look better. Um, so I definitely am still pleased with what they did with his character there. Um, for some reason I thought they were going to make him do something stupid <laughs> just to make Peter look better, but I don't think that they developed Laura Jean and John Ambrose's relationship that much. I feel like in the book it's more of a dilemma and um, Laura Jean really struggles with trying to figure out if she should be with Peter or with John Ambrose a lot more than in the movie. I feel like in the movie we didn't see enough of John Ambrose and Laura Jean kind of connecting and that relationship didn't really make sense whereas it just kind of felt like Laura Jean and Peter were having some issues and John Ambrose just happened to be a guy that was around at the same time. <laughs> it didn't really feel like there was much of a decision or um, a dilemma for Laura Jean to pick. So that was one thing. I didn't feel like the love triangle was as equal on both sides as it is with the book. Um, and I know, especially with my next point, that the movie can't be exactly like the book. They can't take everything from the book. But there are some things that I wish they did, like Peter and Jen. I feel like we didn't see enough of Peter and Jen being together to kind of justify Laura Jean being insecure and jealous and all of that. I feel like we see um, and we know that Peter and Jen are together a lot more when you read the book, but I feel like there's not that, ow, just hit my lip, but we don't really see it that much in the movie. One of the examples is that I loved the treehouse scene. I feel like that was really cool because it was really from the book and a lot of the dialogue and what happened was so similar to what actually happened in the book, except that Peter and Jen show up to the treehouse party together in the book because they were hanging out before the party started, he brought her along. Whereas in the movie, they made it so that Peter just mentioned it to her one of the times that they were hanging out and she showed up on her own. Obviously, in the movie, we would know that Peter and Jen had been hanging out in order for Peter to invite her or to tell her about the party, but in the book, they are hanging out before the party and they go together. And I feel like I don't understand why they changed that. I don't know if it was just to make Peter look better or what was going on, but they very, I, I mean, again, don't know much about films, movies, scripts. I don't know any of it, but I just feel like it would have made more sense for them to show up together like they did in the book. I just feel like it could have very easily been like the scene from the book. I don't know why they changed it to them coming separately when they very easily could have just come together and I think that would have made more of an impact with the drama and it would have made um, Laura Jean's insecurities and her jealousy and her confusion on her relationship with Peter a little bit more. It would make more sense and then I think that just would have naturally made the whole love triangle thing more interesting. I don't know. I feel like we just didn't see enough of Peter and Jen together for that whole thing. So yeah, I think I'm just being a little bit nitpicky, but I knew that there was reasons why I didn't like it as much as the first one. So I just wanted to kind of come in here and say that because I feel like I just talked about how much I loved it, which I did. I still really liked it. I still thought it was really cute, really fun. It made me cry, made me emotional. 
it made me feel all the feelings. <laughs> so I definitely still really liked it. I just wanted to kind of come on and explain myself a little bit more now that I've had time to like think about it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now and we'll just get <laughs> back into the video. I mean, obviously there were some differences from the movie to the book, but I still think that they did such a good job of getting the characters, the aesthetic, the plot, just everything. I think they did such a good job. I'm very pleased with the movie and I really hope you guys are as well. I'd love to know if you've read the books, if you've seen the movies, even if you've done both, if you've just done one. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, if you've seen the movie, do you, do you love it? But yeah, that is going to complete this video, I think. I think I've kind of given all my thoughts and feelings on P.S. I Still Love You book and movie. But yeah, like I said, let me know what you guys thought of the movie down below. But uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up this vlog. So please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already, if you would like to stick around. Um, I'd love it if you did. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.